What's happening friends? Mr. Nomad Ben here. Today's adventure we're going to be hanging here in the Dalton area where we're going to go kind of explore some buildings and landmarks to tell some spooky stories. But first, we must eat. And I want to try these Reese PC pancakes here at my local IHOP. I want to try them and review them before we go and uh, have a little paranormal pancake activity here in Dalton. And I'm inviting you to come and join me to celebrate the spectacular occasion and Halloween and Enjoy some pancakes and enjoy yourselves. I need you to come and join me. And here we go. Tell us all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. Tell us all about the finer points of living and traveling. Food, beer, history, nature, quest. Every corner of the world to the great Midwest. Tell us all about where you've been, Nomad Ben. So when I walked into the IHOP, it looks like I have to wait between 10 to 20 minutes for my table, but I've been anticipating these pancakes for a while, so I might as well document what is offered during the October 2021 season. Looks like you got the free Scary Face Pancake here, eyes for Oreos, strawberry for nose, and candy corn for a smile. So if you're 12 or under, this is a free pancake for you. And there's a whole list of the fall pancakes here. They have the traditional pumpkin spice pancakes. I was tempted to get those, but the Reese PC pancakes is what really caught my attention. And of course, you've got the caramel apple, a la mode, pancakes as well. So, kind of move for something peanut buttery, and I love Reese's. I'm obsessed with Reese's, so I'm gonna go ahead and get one of those. Got some burrito and bowls in here too. And then over here is the history of IHOP. Welcome to Yummy's Flavors. Opened in 1958 and even says so right here. Established in 1958, the International House of Pancakes. That's what IHOP stands for. It opened in Los Angeles, California. So here we are at the IHOP. Now I just gotta wait till my table is opened up and ready to eat. So I sat down and put in my order. So, just kind of looking around if there's anything worth documenting while I wait. And they have like a really cool looking size that's come together. Coffee and pancakes, 24-7. And I got myself a coffee while I wait. And of course there is the menu of the fall flavored Halloween pancakes, which I showed earlier. And they have the combinations to go with those pancakes. And um, I think I'm in the mood for... Uh, either a sausage egg combo with Reese's or bacon with Reese's. So, kind of little decisions to make here. Of course, you have other options too if you want, like maybe burgers, sandwiches, all that kind of good stuff as well. So, other than breakfast, you got uh, good options to choose here. All right, so here we go. Let's have some coffee. Not bad coffee. I've had better. But it's a great way to get caffeinated. So very drinkable and easy coffee to drink. Not too strong, not too weak. All right, my food has arrived. And this is what we're dealing with here. The Reese PC pancakes. Just look at the design of how they did it here. Like the peanut butter and chocolate stripes alongside with the Reese PCs on top. This looks so good. I decided to have some sausage instead of bacon. And of course, some good scrambled eggs with some cheese and some hash browns. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, let's go ahead and try these pancakes here. Let's see here. Dig deep into this. A little whipped cream on it. Mmm. These are pretty good. Really good. I think I like this a little better than those pancakes I had at um, the pancake um, pan no, the pancake lodge or the pancake pantry. I was in Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge with my wife. Um, that peanut butter was just too rich and like lots of like you know Reese's cups and all that. But this is a perfect balance. So, like a good amount of chocolate and peanut butter and Reese's pieces. This is pretty good. I like it a lot. The pancakes are a little more fluffy, so, yeah. Satisfied. A very good breakfast. A very good pancakes. Well, now that I got my belly full, why don't we go and find those spooky locations? So let's go. Our first stop takes place in Tunnel Hill, Georgia. 
Oh, hey. What's up? I'll have to make some cheese sticks here. So the reason why we're doing this little fourth wall break, because we were on our way to Tunnel Hill, the Chetugeta Tunnel. But the problem is, around that area, you need a permit to film there. So I didn't work on getting a permit. I didn't even know we had to get one. I know we could take some tours around that part of uh, Tunnel Hill, but maybe next time I'll kind of do some more research and ask the right kind of questions. But I can show some images here of what we're up against. So this particular tunnel is being built in 1848, completed in 1850. It was used until 1928 until there were more rail, uh, more tunnels built nearby. So this particular tunnel uh, was abandoned until 1992 and then it'd be reopened to the public. It was filled with mines and everything. So these images that you're seeing here is that people were haunted by some sounds of Confederate soldiers. They claim they have seen some Confederate soldiers. They've heard noises from Confederate soldiers. They even had smells of rotten flesh in this tunnel. And also they claim that they also seen lanterns and campfires nearby around the tunnel as well. So a lot of craziness has happened around this particular tunnel and nearby. And people have claimed that they have encountered paranormal activity around this tunnel. And I wanted to take you guys over here, but unfortunately we couldn't get into it. So on further ado, let's go ahead and continue this vlog. Let's continue more with Tunnel Hill. Well, I parked the Fed Chet over here at Tunnel Hill First Baptist Church, but right across the street is a historical cemetery right over here. Let's get some information about this particular cemetery. So here we are at the Tunnel Hill Cemetery established in June 26, 1876. And we got a whole bunch of tombstones all throughout here in the middle of the town of Tunnel Hill. So let's go ahead and explore if we can find some maybe very old tombstones that could possibly be haunting this town today. So it seems like on this side of the street is more updated tombstones here, but everything from this point on looks like there are older tombstones from as um, early as the 1800s. Like this person here was born in 1873 and died in 1964. You kind of explore around and this tombstone over here this person was born in 1853 and died in, looks like 1910, and then 1858 and 1916. And then this is a, a general, not sure what um, side of the war, but this person was born in 1819 and died in 1901. And you just kind of explore around. You got a lot of these historic tombstones Possibly people in here were definitely Confederate troops or Confederate veterans or even Yankee troops or Yankee veterans too. People that moved from the north and reaped the benefits from the south is called the carpetbaggers. So perhaps that there's also Yankees that are buried here as well. So you got groups of people from the war and people that migrated from the north to south buried here in all these years ago. And then look at that. I like this is a particularly an interesting looking area right here. This person was actually born during the Civil War. Anne E., wife of uh, G. O. M. McCombs. And this one's a very interesting one right here because it's being gated, and wonder why it's it's gated for. But just lots of historical type tombstones here. And some of them are very hard to read because of the aging of the rocks, of erosions. But still, that's pretty cool. I'm walking around the cemetery with my sandals on and things being buried in leaves. It's probably not smart to have sandals on, but at the same time, you know, you guys that don't like shoes, trying to be on the lookout for water moccasins or copperheads. And I really admire this right here. This has definitely got to be like families right here. Clearly they don't want no one in. 
I just want to say I do respect the dead here. Just to let you guys know. I respect the families as well. So a little fact about me. I actually lived here in Tunnel Hill just for a very, very short period of time back in the day in my very early 20s. And uh, I gotta say, there are times here where we're just a little spooky, uh, especially at nighttime, because I actually lived on the opposite side of the cemetery, right over there. I'm not gonna take you where I live because I'm kind of embarrassed of the environment I lived in for a little period of time. But yes, I lived right on the opposite side over there by the cemetery and I have explored the cemetery before before I became a youtuber cemeteries are kind of interesting to kind of look around you can see just looking at tombstones are pure history but yeah, I've noticed living here in Tunnel Hill there's enough little churches that surround this area and so much death and scariness has happened in this town especially being a church right behind me and a cemetery right over there so you think that the presence of the Holy Ghost could defeat these ghosts or the Holy Ghost could send them wherever they go because ghosts are kind of spirits that haven't gone to heaven or hell yet as legends have told. So, you know, you never know what kind of ghosts you'll get. Right now I claim sanctuary here in the church parking lot. So Holy Ghost time away from those ghosts. <laughs> Well, friends, we got one more stop to go to. So we're gonna wait till the sun sets and kind of get into the mood of a little more spookiness. So I'll see you guys in a second. Our next stop in our Spooky Tales tour will take place in the heart of downtown Dalton. And here we are at the historic Wink Theater in downtown Dalton. It now currently operates as Rockbridge Community Church, but back in the day it was actually an old-timey movie theater. I'm going to give you guys a little gander here in the middle of the town of Dalton. But what makes this place so scary is that back in the day after their fair share of renovations, employees that worked in this particular theater have heard noises inside, such as like bam, bam, bam. And they hear children outside playing. The manager, uh, Dale Hurst, his father, took over as manager in 1971. And they could hear noises outside as they work in here. But what makes it even more scary is that workers that worked inside this building, they could hear children run up and down the aisles in the movie theater. And any time they, before they start a movie, they'll see dark images in front of a movie screen before the movie starts. How scary is that? So now that the theater is now converted into a church, do you think the kind of ghost they were feeling present is the Holy Ghost? For the Wink having its own fair share of paranormal activity right across the street on the same block, the Perfect Cup also has its fair share of paranormal activity. Owner Priscilla Marvels of the Perfect Cup Coffee of this building here has actually been completed in 1897. But the person who operates this place believes the ghosts from the Wink Theater have made its way over here to this particular building. And they've had employees actually feel the presence of people watching them, feel that someone's tugging their clothes, or feeling a darkness around them. And even the person who owns and operates the place itself believes that sometimes she feels like someone is watching her as she's working in the building and also have people getting stuck in the bathrooms and doors opening up so a lot of crazy spookiness happening in this particular building as well and this is as close as 2009 finding out what's going on here so i've been living around here for about eight and a half years now and never really took the time or energy to look into paranormal activity or spooky activity that's happened in downtown dalton or the neighboring towns like tunnel hill or chattanooga tennessee or cleveland but throughout the years when I do this uh, YouTube hobby, I can't wait to do some more research and kind of go to more locations and be uh, more well-researched. I kind of skimmed some things and kind of went to the buildings that were talked about in the Haunted Dalton, Georgia book by Connie Hall Scott. I'll leave in the link in the description below of her uh, book and her name and uh, where you can find some of the things I've talked about in there about those buildings. So I had a lot of fun even just kind of doing a little, just, just snippets of research 
and going to the buildings and talking about it. But this town, just in that block around those buildings, have a lot more scary and spooky stuff that's happening right now or in the past. I like to document it for times like this during the haunting season in October. And I had fun making these vlogs for you for the rest of the month of October, celebrating my 31st birthday and just having a good time. And then for this particular vlog, a very chill Halloween special, having a Halloween-themed breakfast at the IHOP, and just kind of going around and uh, doing some uh, paranormal activity research and looking into the building. So I had a lot of fun. Well, friends, I hope you guys enjoyed this particular vlog and enjoyed this little uh, Mr. Nomad Ben Toberfest kind of series for the rest of October of every Friday and Saturday. If you enjoyed this particular vlog, please give this vlog a thumbs up. It shows that you care and enjoy yourself. And if you're new to my channel or a returning viewer, please hit that red subscribe button and ring that notification bell so I can be in the loop of things. And anytime I upload something new, I kind of pop up and just kind of enter into your life and just go ahead and watch that video or watch later, come back and watch it whenever you guys can. I'm going to take a little break entering into the month of November, but we're going to have some new episodes entering November and then well into December every weekend or every other weekend. just depends on my schedule because um, the holidays are coming up. And, of course, I am married and I have a son, so uh, I will be busy being a, doing those things, being a father and a husband, but also wanted to entertain you guys. So come up with some new ideas for you guys during November and into December for ideas for Vlogmas. Since I'm not going to do every day from the 1st to the 21st because I have a busy schedule, but I'll do what I can to find some really fun things to vlog during those times, and it's going to be a good rest of the 2021 season. So I hope you guys enjoy these vlogs. Eat well. Keep your mind walking. Stay tuned for new vlogs. I'll see you guys soon. Even though you can't see it, the moon is almost full, but here in the south, when the moon is three-fourths full... During the month of October, after sunset, Confederate soldiers like to come to life. Moo ha 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 ha!